Hi YouTube family, Crystal here. Just wanted to come on and um, share my heart with you today and a serious, serious warning dream that I was given last night uh, from the Lord. I've been thinking and praying on it this morning and um, I believe that he wants me to share this right away. There is no delaying the message and I think that the dream really speaks quite clearly for itself. I will really try my best today to convey this in the most clear and concise uh, manner that I can to get the point across and what he's trying to say in the dream because he does use often very personal things um, to us to get the meaning across. But I think I will be able to convey this in a way that you'll understand. And I've made some notes this morning um, and I've been reading through some scriptures too that I would really love to share with you today about this and about the message and I do feel guys that we are really really running out of time now that the day of grace is about to close and this honestly I've just I've never had a dream like this before ever so I'm just going to um, try and convey some of my notes here to you guys and forgive me because this is quite heavy and it's not easy to put yourself out there and be so vulnerable and share this kind of thing. So last night, I'm going to call this the sinking ship dream. I was on some sort of huge cruise ship and I was actually teaching dance class to people. I used to be a dance teacher in my day. And the scenes kept repeating themselves over and over again, but each each time it did, it got much worse. Um, so the first scene, I was in a room on, on the top of the ship. I just knew I was at the top. And we were working on some bar work. It was almost as if it was a ballet class. And we were working on bar work, the whole class, and it consisted only of bar work. And then suddenly, we got interrupted and the ship went into total chaos and trouble. Um, it was sinking, it was about to sink um, and we got evacuated and we were, I felt very safe. Like I wasn't fearful. Um, we were, we were safe and rescued. We were evacuated and then boom, the dream started again. And the second scene, I'm back up in the same room and I'm teaching again, but this time I was a little perturbed because I was, <laughs> I was trying to get them off of bar work and into the center to do some dancing in the center. Um, and it was like, they weren't progressing the way I wanted them to, um, off the bar and into the center. They just weren't getting it. Um, and then all of a sudden, boom, suddenly ship is starting to sink again. Um, we ran out of time, the class time, and, um, only some of us made it to safety in this second scene. In the third scene, this was totally different this time. Um, I wasn't even teaching class this time. I was just down um, on a different level of the ship, observing people, I guess. I don't know, I felt like I was really there. It just felt so real, guys. Um, watching them go about their business and then <laughs> suddenly the bottom just drops out and the whole thing just drops. And whatever floor we were on hit the water and I managed to swim away, but not everybody did. And then the final time, the fourth and final time, excuse me, I'm just gonna, I just heard my husband come in. I'm just gonna pause. Hey, sorry about that. Um, I just didn't want the noise to interfere with the recording. So yeah, with the third time it was, it really just, I felt it. I felt that, like just that sudden, bottom just coming out from underneath everybody and just dropping and like I said um I don't know I was safe uh I don't think everybody was though and then the fourth time this <laughs> this this really really got to me hard I was in the exact same floor again with these people but this time it was even faster and it was way worse not only did the bottom drop out but then the whole thing like collapsed and tilted down and it was like the bottom, it, it was within seconds. Like I hardly had any time to even view my surroundings or whoever was there. And, um, you know, the ship just went on this really hard angle and I knew there was no way like to survive it. And I just kind of, I don't know, my, 
I was calm, but I just went, we're all going to die now. That's all I said. And then I woke up from the dream and I just, my chest was so, so heavy. <sighs> like, I was like trying to process what had just happened. And at first, you know, I thought, oh my goodness, the enemy's attacking me. But I realized that inside the dream, I had no fear. It was just when I woke up, like there's the feeling of being in it and experiencing that was just one of the scariest things ever. And I knew it was the Lord warning the world what's about to happen and that judgment is about to come. I mean, it just knocked the wind right out of me and I still feel it right now. And I know when I get these kind of vivid dreams like this where they feel so real that I have to come on and share this with you as a warning. So you can take it for what you will. Um, I really think that um, that third and fourth scene where I was more of an observer there, I think that he allowed me to feel how the sudden is going to feel, like actually feel, and that many indeed will perish to their death. It is not easy for me to say this to you guys. Um, and I've, I've just never had a dream like this before. I even woke up worried. I was like, Lord, no, like I'm not one of those people. And I was repenting and I was just like, have I done something wrong? But I just realized that it was, he was just trying to show me the world and where people are at with their hearts. And so I just want to go through a little bit of the interpretation with you because, you know, you know, it's from the Lord because you kind of get it right away. Sometimes you have to sit and ponder on it, but this was just one of those things where I knew, I knew right away what it meant. Um, the sinking ship right now, it represents the world and the majority have no idea uh, that judgment is coming and that it will come suddenly. And the Bible says this, right? Um, just so you have a little background on the dance part of my dream. And I knew that he used this because he knew I would understand. But um, in ballet, specifically, bar work is the foundational training of ballet. Any good ballet dancer needs to have a good, solid bar work teaching. And I believe that the Lord was trying to show me that those who have grasped the foundational training of his word will be saved and rescued in the first scene we were up, right? And yeah, um, I just have a few verses that I want to share that goes along with that. Um, the first one being Matthew uh, 7, uh, verses 24 to 27. So this is the wise and foolish builders. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. It just so <laughs> represented the dream that I had this morning. Another one, Luke 6, uh, 46 to 48 the wise and foolish builders. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. Guys, we got to get our foundation right. We need to go back to our first love and get it right. Don't stray from proper teaching. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 to 13. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day, it says the day, will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and that fire will test the quality of each person's work. <sighs> I think these scriptures really speak for themselves. Just one more in regards to this. Um, Isaiah twenty-eight sixteen, 
So this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. You know, in that first scene, um, I had no, there was no panic, not for ones who knew Jesus, not for ones that had grasped the foundational training of the gospel and his word and were living it, actually living it. Just going to go back to my notes here from my dream. <sighs> yeah, so the second scene um, where I was trying to kind of, I don't know, I, I was rushing them through the foundational training almost to skip ahead to the center work. But it was like a lost cause for most because you can't go on to solid food if you haven't even drank the milk yet. Does that make sense? Um, this is really spelt out really well in Hebrews uh, 5, 11, 13. I'll just read that to you as well. Warning against falling away. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. So it's like they've gotten stuck in the milk phase and they just can't seem to move on to solid food because they haven't even grasped the foundational training. Um, <laughs> I think it just really stands for itself, guys. Um, God's word is so clear here and it's warning us against backsliding and falling away. We need to grip onto his foundational training and stay in it and live it. There must be evidence of our faith. There must be fruit. Um, Jesus will cut away every dead branch. He will. He said he will. Um, in the third and fourth scene, I do believe that it was like the unbelievers and perhaps the people who have just fallen away. Um, they just don't care anymore. And, you know, the word says, um, Matthew 6, 24, for you cannot serve two masters. You will either hate one and love the other. And, you know, it's coming so soon. The floor is going to drop out beneath these people suddenly. It's just going to be sudden, the day of the Lord. And we need to be, excuse me, we need to be ready every day. For we don't even know if we have our next breath and time is almost up. It's time to get serious about your faith. It's time to choose whom you will serve. For there is no right or left. There is only up or down. You're a child of God or you're a child of Satan. There is no other choice. You have free will to choose. These are the last hours to repent and ask for forgiveness. The word says judgment is coming. And there is a limit to how much our Lord will take. You only need to pick up your Bible and read your Old Testament if you think that our God does not judge justly. To know God is to know all sides of him. Yes, he is a God of perfect love, but he is also a God who judges perfectly. All you have to do is read Sodom and Gomorrah, read about Noah, uh, for we are living in a time where history indeed is repeating itself and the stench of sin and iniquity has risen to the throne room. He won't take this and stay silent forever and the hammer will come down. And here's the question. Will you be ready when it does? That scripture, um, it just reminds me of Revelation uh, 6, 17, who will be able to stand for the great day of their wrath has come and who will be able to stand? And it's going to come suddenly. First uh, Thessalonians 5, 3, just wrote down here. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come upon them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. That's what that third and fourth scene represented in my dream, guys. So <laughs> I'm going to leave it there for today. I just, I just needed to get this out as soon as possible. I don't know. The urgency in me was really severe today, and it just shows you where God's heart is right now and what he's seeing. And it just makes me so sad that people just don't get it, that they need to wake up. So the last uh, scripture I want to read for you guys today before I say goodbye is of Revelation 18, uh, 4, I believe. Let me just check here. 
sorry, it's just loading. This is the warning to escape Babylon's judgment. We all know that it's coming. Um, and then I heard another voice from heaven say, come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues, for her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she is given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Pour her a double portion from her own cup. I really encourage you to read Revelation 17 and 18. I do feel like that is where our world is about right now and that it's ready um, to come crashing down. And I'll just leave you with, um, I know you've probably heard this on other channels, but this world is indeed a sinking ship and the Lord is asking you to please come out of her. Come out of her come out of her. Find the Lord, seek Jesus while he can still be found. Repent, believe what he did for you. We're all sinners and we are all in need of Jesus and what he did for us on the cross that day. He took on the punishment of the entire world and he's reaching out to you with both arms asking you, will you just come to him? Do you choose him or do you choose the world? <laughs>